there is something accurate about life that's, that also happens to be a wildly romantic notion. But the fact that it's so accurate takes all this sentiment out of it and makes it real, I think. And that thing is that no matter how hard things are for you in your life, if the right person walks in the door, uh, that changes. The problem doesn't go away. The problem moves over here. Your spirit rises, and you're better able to handle your life, and life has become a better deal. That's a very romantic thought, but there's nobody who will disagree with it, with the accuracy of it. I think that's what the picture's about. Lisa is somebody who, from age three, realized she had a talent, and that talent was an athletic talent. It was being able to hit a large ball with a wooden stick, and there's a place for that, and she spent the rest of her life doing it. That means for people who are this skilled, for people who have this kind of talent, and who people who have the personality to drive themselves like this character does, uh, it means that, you're, that, that Saturdays are about driving 200 miles and then 200 miles back to play in a game. It means going away from your family for a time to train with the right coach. It means not being able to play for your high school because you're on a team that's much better than any high school team that plays in the region. It means you get a scholarship to college where this is your full-time job and you tend to date only athletes because only athletes can possibly understand what your schedule is between going to school and playing ball. It means that is your life and your passion. In her case, it means you went to the Olympics. It means you were a key person in doing that. It means you were made captain of your team because you have ability to not drive not only yourself, but to drive everybody around you. And as somebody says, make every other player better because of the kind of player you are. And then in one second, all that's pulled away from you and you are dumped in the real world. That's her story. His story is that he's, he had a very colorful father. His mother walked out on them after she saw Kramer versus Kramer one day. Father raised him, Father Jack Nicholson, exotic, larger than life, what, whatever that is. He, he was stolid. In other words, instead of, you know, when you have a father like that, you tend to go the other way. You tend to get a little locked in. You tend to have good manners. You tend to want to treat people decently. And he's almost a throwback in his decency with that colorful father. Uh, goes to business school, does well, comes out, invariably picks the wrong women, but p picks, picks quite beautiful women who want low-maintenance guys <laughs> to, to pass through. He is the lowest-maintenance guy in the world. That, that does happen. I do find myself laughing. I do get on the soundtrack laughing where it's a problem for the film. But what you just described is antithetical to the inner life that I experience when I'm on the set. <laughs> He's a self-justifying machine. I mean, everything that's wrong is the government's fault. Nothing he does, nothing he does is wrong. The problem is foreign competition. The problem is anything but the fact that he's, you know, that he, there's some kind of ethical draino that he's, that, that he's spilled down his system. <laughs>